Hi, Matt. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, they're starting a lefty tomorrow. Who will play center field for you? Veerling. And I've, I've spoken with both uh, Brandon and Matt, so they know. So I can announce that. Quintana's numbers are just really good against lefties. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's really thrown well overall the last few starts. But, um, yeah, predict mostly really good numbers against lefties. Is Sosa here? He is here. Um, we're waiting for the workout to be over. If the trainers clear him, we'll, we'll put him on the roster. Thank you. My question was about Sosa. So. <laughs> Did you do any bounce back evaluation of hand? Uh, yeah, he's out there throwing now at 245. Uh, once he comes off the field, we'll find out if he's ready to go or not. Any hunch there? Oh. I would think he's ready. Hey, Rob. Uh, Chris O'Connell, Fox Philadelphia. Just hey, came in on a flight with some uh, fans who were on the flight. As I told JT, I'm here representing the fans who yeah. are here and have been celebrating with you along the way. Um, can you feel the weight that has been lifted off of the fan base in Philadelphia uh, when it comes to uh, playoffs after 11 years? Yeah, I think so. I think it's, you know, obviously it's important to our passionate fan base. But, um, you know, I feel it in the clubhouse as well, you know, because it's been, it's been a lot of talk, uh, especially in the five years that I've been here. And to kind of get that monkey off your back, it's, I think it's a big deal. And I, I think that um, talking to the guys today, they're very relaxed, very confident. Um, they feel really good about it. So, yes. You, you mentioned the word relaxed, and that's uh, both JT and, and Zach. Uh, mentioned that as a quality of yours, uh, the ability to, you know, through 162, kind of keep these guys um, at an even keel and, and not, not too tight, not looking over their shoulder. Um, is that a conscious thing on your part? Is that a, uh, well, I'll just ask that. Is that a conscious thing on your part? Yeah, I may, I may look relaxed, but I'm, there's times when I'm not relaxed. But, uh, but I think you, no, no matter what, you have to, kind of um, have that relaxed presence too. If you're in any type of leadership spot at all, I think that's very important. And for the most part, I am relaxed um, because I know that there, there are just certain things you can't control. And baseball's a funny game and there's a lot of weird bounces and weird things that happen and you just gotta, uh, you gotta fix problems constantly. I mean, what, do you think you'll sleep any differently tonight on the eve of your, your I mean, this game here for you? I don't know. I'll let you know in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we talked on Sunday in Washington about the wet conditions, the wet mound, and, and Wheeler at 77 pitches coming out of that game. Is he where you wanted him to wind up in terms of being stretched out after those three last three starts? Yeah, I think he's, he's fine, and, and we're in playoff mode now, so he's, he's full go. Um, Would have probably liked a few more pitches out of him. Uh, in his last start, but we didn't get it, but uh, he's good to go. And, you know, you've talked about this, but your confidence level with him on the mound, I mean, do you sort of, um, you know, I guess, how, how does it feel when you hand him the ball and tell him to go out there? Is it, you know, can you, can you relate that to other aces that you've been around throughout your long career? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> he's one of the best pitchers in the game. So when you hand him the ball, um, and we got a couple of those guys, when you hand those guys the ball, uh, you really feel good about, you know, what the outcome is going to be. It's not always there, but you feel good about it going in. Do you guys have any update on um, Broadhand? Yeah, so he's out there throwing right now, and if he comes out of that and feels good, then I, I would assume we'll activate him for, and put him on the roster. Have you decided which starter you're going to hold back off the roster? Or what, have you decided which of your extra stars will be in the bullpen? Yes. You're not going <laughs> to, you haven't made that total. Yeah, we haven't, I haven't talked to everybody um, and we haven't, we haven't sent out the roster or announced it, but uh, I'm sure it's coming shortly. I, I'm not even sure what the deadline is tomorrow that we have to have it into Major League Baseball, but uh, yeah, I'm sure once we get it, we'll, we'll announce it. 
Yeah, as a former catcher, um, when you look at JT and his ability to control the running game, is it footwork? Is it arm strength? Is it release? Is it anticipation? I think it's all of those, to tell you the truth. And um, he's so athletic. Uh, he's so quick. Tremendous arm strength. Tremendous accuracy. Um, and on the back end of that, we've got a bunch of middle infielders that can, can really tag, can pick and tag. Uh, so it's a lot of those things. But he's... He's as good as it gets when it comes to controlling the running game. And, and uh, being a former catcher, you don't understand how much respect I have for him being able to do that. In Fredrickson Post-Dispatch, I'll ask a St. Louis-based question. Beerling, uh, what has he proven to you over the course of this season um, to be able to start in a game like this? I know he's had some big moments for you guys. Yeah, he has. And, um, started off slow. You know, I made the team coming out of spring training. Started off slow. We sent him back to, to Lehigh uh, to kind of get reset, and he did. Um, and then when he came back, he started to really have good at-bats, um, seeing the ball, a lot of pitches, getting back and knowing the strike zone, being able to use the field. I mean, he impacts the ball as, as well as anybody. Um, he's athletic. He can play defense. He can play anywhere on the diamond. Um, like I said, he's had good at bats. He's really a good player and a very important piece to this club because he can. He's because of his versatility and his speed and his hitting ability. So he's a really good player. How are the Cardinals different from the last time you saw them in your prep so far? Well, uh, the last time we saw him, Pujols wasn't what he's doing right now. You know, so that's that's a big piece right there. Plus, they've added Quintana. Who's really pitched well for them, but um, they're they're a good club. They can you know they can swing the bat, they can pitch, uh, they got a good bullpen, they play really good defense. Uh, they're a solid club all the way around, and um, so it's a good matchup. I'm wondering, have you heard from Joe Girardi since you guys clinched? Or I have. To- he he texted me the night we clinched, and it was really nice. And uh, um, yeah, I have a lot of respect for him. Post possibly, I mean, you spent a lot of time in the postseason with him by his side. Was there anything you learned from him in in postseason play specifically in terms of how he handled things, or maybe something you put in your back of your head? Yeah, I think um, handling this part of the job, you know, the the media side of it, um, just trying to stay calm and, and answer the questions as honestly as honestly, but um, simply as you can. Um, I think that's part of it, plus the fact that, you know, just the preparation that goes into the roster construction and your bullpen construction and that type of thing. When you first took over, uh, you got these bullpen guys into roles and, and kind of kept running them out there, and it seemed like it worked. But, I mean, now I mean, you've got a lot of new variables that have kind of popped up in the last few weeks from, you know, some struggles, from some injury stuff, um, Eflin pitching the way he has. How much? I mean, how much thought have you put into it? And do you have a, like, do you know what you're going to do? Generally speaking. Yeah, I think so. I I think the emergence of Alvarado has really been a that, big that deal. A- um, the emergence of Eflin getting healthy and and not having the time to build him back up into a starter and, and just knowing that you know he's a he's a calm person. He doesn't you know the heartbeat never changes. Um, being able to um, trust him late in games really helps. So now you've got a whole bunch of different guys that you can mix and match later in games from sixth inning on. And um, yeah, there's a couple of guys that have been stru- struggling lately, but uh, you know that comes and goes. And, and I'm expecting them to to get right. And and then we've got a whole bunch of options. So it's it's a good pen. Well, I think I think really good. Um, Casty's healthy. Harp hasn't complained about a thing, um, and I think mentally and emotionally they're ready to go, and they're excited to be be here and play and um, ready to contribute.